Hi, today we are going to drive 6 LED projectors from a single $3 microcontroller. It's madness, that's also why I named this board VGA Madness. This project is sponsored by JLCPCB, more on them later. I'm experimenting on this project for a few months now and I don't even know where this is going. But I thought it might be a good time to show you some first results and get some new inspiration. Let's start at the beginning. If you are fresh to my channel, I'm a maker creating mainly electronic projects. Most of those are driven by microcontrollers, which are basically small programmable computer chips with the processing power and memory comparable to PCs from the 80s and 90s. The ESP32 especially comes even with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The limitation in processing power and memory always intrigues me to get the most out of it. Nowadays it's even quite simple to build custom printed circuit boards using those. I'm not an electrical engineer, yet I already managed to pull off a few working projects. One of those was a simple extension board to such a microcontroller to connect to a VGA display. VGA? You know, those chunky connectors from the previous century on those antique screens? It basically uses three analog voltage levels for the RGB pixels and two sync signals to indicate a new frame and line. The limiting factors of the microcontroller are the bitrate we can output stuff and the RAM. After booting there are basically around 300 kilobytes of memory free which even doesn't fit a VGA frame in true color. Yet there are smaller resolutions and lower pixel bitrates that we can use. My VGA board supported up to 16 bits per pixel. 14 of those bits were used to mix the colors and 2 bits had to be reserved for the sync signals. The highest supported resolution in 16 bits was 400 by 300 pixels. Going down to 8 bits it was even 800 by 600 which didn't fit into RAM unless we used some tricks. A 640 by 400 frame fits into memory but there is not much left to do anything else. Another problem of the 8-bit modes is that we already need two of those bits for the sync signals. This leaves us with two bits per color component. If we are reducing the color fidelity anyways, I ask myself why not reusing the sync signals and running two screens at three bits each. The two screens would simply run with the same timing. That would leave us with one bit per color component. We simply sell it as a 80s retro display. The cool part is we wouldn't even sacrifice any resolution to run two screens. Wait, wait, wait. How about we use only one bit per pixel, just using the same bit for red, green and blue. That means six displays at the same time. 60 frames per second, 640 by 400. And the CPU is idle since everything is done by the DMA and I2S in the background. This is madness. On my secondary channel Bitloonies Trash, I started to design the board on a live stream. I used the simplest design possible to test the six displays. The plan was to quickly use my minimal to make a prototype. It's good for a quick cost effective test if the concept works at all. However, I forgot to flip the back layer, it came out mirrored and we needed a second session. The second try worked. 21? What? No. Well, I flipped apart again. But we managed to recover by putting on the microcontroller upside down. Magic smoke. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. This design had the R, G and B signals hardwired to a single pin. For the <coughs> final design I wanted more flexibility to be able to use either two displays with 3 bits color each or 6 monochrome displays. 
I decided to use every pin available to give each R, G and B signal an individual pin and use the internal GPIO matrix of the microcontroller to control the signals by software. The GPIO matrix has the possibility to route an internal bit to multiple physical pins. That would give me enough flexibility to run the displays in color or monochrome. The previous ports I designed were solder kits which required to solder the pin headers and didn't include the actual microcontroller. This time I wanted to test JLCPCB's improvements on their assembly service. They offered to sponsor a project and I took this opportunity to get a better version of these boards. EasyEDA, the design software I'm using, is connected to JLCPCB and LCSC, the provider of the components. So I could pick the parts available at LCSC to not delay the manufacturing of the boards. I tried an USB-C design this time and put the serial interface and the ESP32 module directly on so it's a fully featured board. All the parts were available and I could simply place my order with assembly. What's new this time is that JC supports TrueHole assembly now. That saves a lot of time especially with so many pins to solder. While submitting the order you can check the placement and see the actual cost. Usually the more boards you order the cheaper it gets per board since the load charge is only counted once. This total cost seems like much compared to just ordering boards for $2. But these are actually fully featured and assembled development boards which usually wouldn't sell for less than $20. Another new feature I really love is that you can select JLC to handle the customs for you. I had trouble with DHL before keeping my boards for at least a week to clear the customs. Now I can do this right away and there is no shipping delays and extra handling at the doorstep. From ordering to my doorstep it took under two weeks with Easter holidays in between. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. The boards looked really nice, the true hole soldering was really good. I only discovered one solder bridge at the narrow pins of the USB-C connector. Usually the JLC service would handle that but I didn't bother and quickly fixed it myself. Looking at those pins I'm glad I didn't decide to solder it myself. It's not my last time I'm using this service for sure. Especially considering all the design bugs I found in this design. The board was detected by my PC. I was relieved my USB-C circuit worked. But I wasn't able to program it. Guess what? I mixed up RX and TX. Oh well, that's a rookie mistake we have to make on every other design I guess. Nothing a simple budge wouldn't fix. That's why you leave your signal wires easy accessible on your designs. This time the upload worked flawlessly. Okay, where do we get 6 displays with VGA connectors now? Thinking of all the possibilities I could do with 6 displays, like a holodeck, I simply purchased 6 LED projectors from my supporter money. Yeah, that's where all your money goes. No worries, these are only $70 each and have all the connectors we need for all our projects. The 720p resolution is also high enough. I linked it in the description below if you need it for your experiments. I got the VGA cables from eBay. I can only imagine the sellers were surprised someone would buy all their inventory on those. With Martin's improvements to my old VGA library all we need to do was to expand the GPIO matrix configuration. And it worked. Cool. At that point we discovered a green shadow that appeared in regions with many alternating pixels. With the help of my genius stream homies we narrowed the problem down. I connected a 3.3V signal directly to the color component which should be 075 volts by specification. This wasn't a problem in the past but this was out of spec and these projectors didn't like it. By adding an output resistor we fixed that issue taking the terminating resistor on the receiver side into consideration. This is something I wouldn't be able to do alone. These streams even though dragging sometimes are really good lessons in debugging and fantastic teamwork. After this was fixed we were able to concentrate on the demonstration. I tell you just coding a simple 3D star field was so much fun and looked already great. We tried to add some beat detection but I must admit that was mediocre at best. Still I'm happy the board works as I imagined and it's truly pure madness. 
I fixed the issues for the final version and ordered them from JLCPCB. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video and I'm looking forward to the madness we will try next with this board. Consider subscribing to not miss that. Thanks to all my supporters which are helping to fund these projects. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!